So I'm going to take you through one of my whole chest workouts. Now, my chest strength has suffered a lot from my surgery. And even though my bicep surgery obviously doesn't affect my chest, apart from the fact that I was weaker on the tricep for a while due to my arm being immobile, because I lack in terms of pronation and then supination on this arm, you can even see that, it makes it very difficult to facilitate the movement on some chest exercises. For example, on a bench press, when I'm coming down on the bar, I actually can't pronate comfortably well enough to use the grip that I used to use. So I found it difficult to get my strength back on chest exercises because I have this weakness and stiffness in my forearm. So what I'm going to do is talk you through the whole chest workout what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and then kind of it gives you a little bit of an insight into my recovery. So, here we go. So the decline press I'm using to start off with, because that, the handles are angled in, it's actually the most comfortable chest machine that, that I've learned to use. So basically the handles turn in like this, which for me works really, really well, and much, much more comfortable than a barbell press. So I'm not doing it because I think the machine is superior, I'm just doing it because biomechanically it feels like it suits me at the moment. Also, because both arms move independently, it's very easy for me to know if there's a weakness on this side. For ages on a barbell bench press, it feel like this side lags, but of course, because the handles move independently, it becomes very, very noticeable if this side is weaker, so it allows me to focus a little bit more on making sure that my strength is symmetrical between both sides. So I'm gonna move on to the incline barbell press. Now, this is something I've only done for a couple of workouts, and my strength on it is very, very weak. So for months of, well, years actually, I couldn't get the bar down to my press without press the bar down to my chest without some kind of stiffness in the forearm so the last couple of workouts actually the first time in ages that I can even comfortably press it with full range so um, my strength on this is piss poor so I'll be on 70 kilos today and I'm only probably doing sets of eight which is 20 kilos behind roughly what I would have been before but you know I have to make sure that I can do it pain free before I keep loading it up so uh, yeah, I'm going to be weak on this. It's not an exercise I really look forward to at the moment, but because I know it lags behind so much from where it was before, I try and focus on it to, to build it back up to previous levels. So I'm about to go into dumbbell flies. As you can imagine, with a bicep injury, dumbbell flies is a particularly difficult one for me. So the weight I'm using has dropped a lot from what I used to use. And I'm more cautious of my elbow position. So if I do a set as I would normally, which is what I'll film now, you may see that my left elbow tends to bend a little bit more. I don't know if that's a psychological thing or uh, you know, a kind of protective mechanism against uh, putting too much strain on my bicep. Um, but I struggle to go as deep as I used to and keep my elbows as straight as I used to, even with very light weights. So I'm gonna do it today with 15 kilos, which is, you know, for the same rep range before I would have been using probably 22 kilos. So it's gone down a lot, but it's about as heavy as I can do comfortably without really noticing that my left elbow bends a lot more than the uh, right one. I 
because our camera angle's a little bit shit going from the from the side. What I'm gonna do is put the bench up just a couple of incline notches and they'll film it from straight on so you get a better idea of my uh, elbow position and shoulder position. And yeah, you may notice, and I may notice because it's the first time I filmed this, that my left arm's not able to go as low, but also has slightly more of an elbow bend in it. So I'll put the camera up on the dumbbell rack in front of me, tilt the bench up a little bit, and then you should get a better angle to see what I'm doing. So looking back at it, it's the first time I filmed a, a set of chest flies. You see that my range on it is actually pretty shit. Um, and it's noticeable that I'm bending my elbow more on one side or the other. Now this is something that I wasn't aware of. Even with light weights, only 15s, I'm not going that deep. And my elbow is noticeably bending more on the other side. So I need to make sure that I can kind of rectify this before I keep putting the weights up because the weights felt light to me. So in theory, I'll put the weights up on the next set. But now I've looked at the video footage, I shouldn't be putting the weights up on that exercise. I need to really nail my technique before I keep it going. So now I've gone through my chest workout, what I'm going to do is just finish off on some single arm tricep work. So because my left arm on tricep exercises is still slightly weaker, nowhere near as much as it was when uh, the injury and the surgery was fresh, obviously. But because my left tricep is still a little bit weaker, I just do some isolated tricep work on that side just to try and bring back a little bit of symmetry because my left tricep is still smaller as well. So yeah, just some single arm tricep sections to finish up. So, that's it. Contrary to what a lot of people probably expected, my workouts are very, very straightforward, not advanced, and not complicated. So, because the pain and stiffness that I sometimes get in my forearm, you know, exercise dependent, is a rate limiting factor, I can't push my chest as hard as I used to. So, I can't even remember the last time I, I hit momentary concentric failure on chest. Um, so because of that, and because my rate of perceived exertion is much lower than it used to be, I've upped the frequency. I can't push as hard on the chest, it doesn't need as long to recover, and I find that if I group my workouts closer together, i.e. less rest days between chest workouts, I still make progress uh, faster than I used to because one, I'm weaker, obviously coming back off surgery, two, I can't push as hard, so I probably don't need as long to recover, um, so yeah, my workouts are very easy, you know, relatively speaking, but I'm still making progress on that. So at some point when everything in my forearm starts feeling a little bit easier, I'll be able to push, push harder on chest exercises, um, and we'll probably go back to a routine that, that more closely resembles, uh, what I used to do. Um, also for anyone that's wondering, yes, I am drinking protein immediately post-workout, no, I don't think that protein post-workout is absolutely crucial for gains, with a Z, many Zs, gains, is not crucial for gains, but one, I'm training fasted, two, I might be training again later today. Um, so what I'll do is I'll link my video on post-workout nutrition research and the anabolic window uh, in the comments or if you're watching on YouTube, I'll, I'll put it up now, and that way if you've got any questions on it, watch that video and then ask them there. And if you've got any questions or comments on today's chest workout, then of course, put it in the comments and I'll get back to everyone. 
So I hope it's been insightful for everyone that's asked what I can do training-wise after my surgery. And yeah, if you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments. Thank you.